Our first speaker is, is Tommy Ahonen, and he's the author of about 12 books on the mobile industry. Uh, he's been quoted in over 300 press articles. He used to head, um, in, back in 2001, he headed Nokia's global consulting unit and oversaw Nokia's 3G research center. He's uh, also lectures at Oxford University. In short, here is a man who has seen uh, mobile evolve as we see it today. Uh, please, it gives me great pleasure in welcoming Tommy. Thank, thank you, Sajid. It's, it's very much my, my pleasure to come back to Kuala Lumpur. I, I live in Hong Kong nowadays. I'm originally from Finland. Um, and, and this is such a wonderful place. I like Malaysia very much. You are wonderful, kind people and, and welcoming. So it is a pleasure to be here. But this event is a particular honor for me. Most of you don't really know what was Google's place in the evolution of technology, how it relates to mobile. I am a super mobile guy, 12 books. I'm mobile absolutely everywhere. So right from the start, from 1998, 1999, when we started to believe in this thing we called the mobile internet, it was not surprising for me, when I used to work for Nokia, that people in Ericsson believed in a mobile internet, or Motorola believed that there will be mobile services, or the operators like China Mobile, or Entity Docomo, or Digi, or Cellcom, or Maxis, etc. It was normal for telecoms people to believe in mobile. But something very strange happened in 2005. In 2005, the first company outside of telecoms who came out, global company, who said their industry is going to mobile was Google. Eric Schmidt, who is now the chairman of Google, he was then the CEO of Google, wrote an opinion piece in the Financial Times, a long article, where he said, for the first time, this was two years before anyone had seen an Apple iPhone, Google CEO said, the future of the internet is mobile. That shook everyone. That shook, today it's no surprise. Hewlett Packard says the future of, of PC is mobile. Apple says the future of the PC is mobile. BBC says the future of the television is mobile. All these, Visa says the future of credit cards is mobile. No surprise today. But the first company outside of telecoms to say that the future is mobile was Google. So I have always felt that we are kindred spirits. I write these silly books and silly stories about the future of mobile, and here comes a giant company who is thinking about mobile from the outside and who got it. So in that sense, honestly, thank you for inviting me, Google. It is an honor to be with you here today. So let's take a, a look at the global perspective of mobile marketing. Those of you who have seen me before know Tommy likes to start with an opening joke. Those of you who have seen me before, I'm sorry, this is the same joke. But I think most of you are new audience, so hopefully this is new for you. So, did you know that you can test or how old you are mentally based on how you use your mobile phone? Simple test. So, if you notice that a couple of times every month, the telephone starts to bother you. And then you take it to your child, and you give it to your children and say, it's doing it again, can you please make it stop? Because the phone blinks that envelope. If you don't know how to read a text message, you are over 60 years old. <laughs> now, if you're okay in receiving text messages, what, when people send you a text message, you call them back. And someone sends you a text message, and you call them back. You don't send text messages, you are over 50 years old. If you are okay sending and receiving text messages, but always the messages that you send take a very, 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 very long time, and the messages are very short, then you're over 40 years old. Now, if you are okay sending and receiving text messages, get yourself a you know, BlackBerry, QWERTY, HTC, whatever phone, you know, E7, whatever with a QWERTY, then you are over 30. If you are able to take your phone out of your pocket, send a message without looking at your phone, then you are in your 20s, right? But if you're able to carry a conversation at the same time with your girlfriend on one phone, 
and at the same time ask advice from your oops sorry my phone is stuck in my pocket and at the same same time ask for advice from your best friend boyfriend what should i tell my girlfriend on the other phone if you're able to carry two sms conversations simultaneously then you are a teenager so that that is your test so anyway let, let's take a look at at uh, global perspectives on mobile marketing um, Let's uh, start just a little bit about the size. We heard already uh, a little bit about the scale. Let me put these numbers in a very concrete sense. How big is mobile? At the end of 2010, the planet had 1.2 billion personal computers of any kind, including desktops, laptops, netbooks, notebooks, iPads, anything combined 1.2 billion in use on the planet. The planet had 1.7 billion television sets in use. The planet had 2 billion internet users. The planet had 3.9 billion radios. But mobile phones? 5.2 billion mobile phone subscriptions. Active mobile phone customers. We are at the point where more people have mobile phones than wristwatches. There is nothing we can compare it to. More people carry a mobile phone in their pocket than carry a pen. There is nothing we can compare it to. Honestly, 4.2 people brush their teeth with a toothbrush. More people have a mobile phone in their pocket than actually brush their teeth. It's a sad truth, but it is true. So, you think it is big. Let me twist the story around. It's not just big. How addicted are we? Now it gets interesting. Nokia just measured, last year, the average person on the planet looks at their mobile phone 150 times per day. This is not you and me in this room. We are all addicted to our phone. This is the average person. This is your husband or your wife. These are your parents. These are your kids. These are your cousins, your uncles and aunts. The average person looks at their phone 150 times per day. During Tommy's presentation, I've got 30 minutes, you will be going into your pocket five times. Because the average person looks at it every six and a half minutes of every waking hour of every day. But let, it make, let me make it very concrete comparison. Those of you who smoke, or who have relatives who smoke, if you are a chain smoker, if you smoke, not one pack a day, not two packs a day, but three packs a day. You are constantly smoking. You go into your pocket 60 times a day. The average person looks at their mobile phone 150 times per day. There's nothing like mobile. There's absolutely nothing like it. So where are we? Now we have cool statistics coming in. This is this, this week from, from uh, Time Techland. Where do you lose your phone? The most common places to lose them, swimming pool, taxi, airplane. Ladies, look at number 10. Ladies will lose it in their purse. And I think the funny, the funny story is, the odds of finding your phone lost in your purse is not 100%. 5% of the ladies might lose their phone in their own purse. OK, but anyway. So, so, but this is how crazy this industry is. So let's take a quick look at convergence. Mobile is at the center of convergence. It is not only that the internet is converging with mobile, that media is converging with mobile, and advertising is converging with mobile. Now there are 13 industries, which I believe all of these 13 will end up in the middle of this circle. This is not everything. Mining is not here. Farming is not here. Retail is not here. Travel is not here. These 13 industries will end up in the middle of this circle. Each one of these arrows is the same length. The thickness, the width of each arrow tells you how big an industry is. So when you look at telecoms, telecoms is a $1 trillion industry. Those of you in advertising know advertising is roughly half a trillion dollar industry. Ad uh, internet is roughly $200 billion industry. Music is a $30 billion industry. So the thicker the arrow, the bigger the industry. I have taken each one of these arrows and moved it inside the circle to show you how far they have migrated into convergence. And this is what it looks like. 
I've actually calculated some percentages for you, so you can see. Telecoms, 80% of telecoms has already moved inside this circle. That means that four out of five telephones on the planet will be a mobile phone. One out of five telephones is a traditional fixed landline phone. The internet, roughly half of all internet users, a little bit over half already now, are, are um, mobile. Music, about 35% of music revenues come from mobile, including ringing tones and ringback tones, and so forth. Let's take a look at just a couple of examples of services from here. Did you notice what the credit card industry is saying? I think this was very astonishing. This was only two months ago. Similar to what Google told us back in 2005, Visa is the first major financial institution, global financial institution, which makes this bold statement, the bottom bullet point in blue, the future of payments is mobile. They are specifically talking about mobile phone payments, not near field, not, not uh, contactless, not oysters, not Olympus. They're talking about mobile phones. The future of payments, Visa says, the future of payments is mobile. They also tell us the future of the Visa card, the Visa card of the future is a Visa mobile card. This is huge. This is an absolutely enormous opportunity that is coming inside this circle. How about advertising? Did you notice this? Ford has gone completely mad. Mad as in mobile advertising. First global advertising brand, which said they shall not do more consumer advertising about Ford cars unless the advertising campaign includes mobile. It doesn't mean they are exclusively mobile campaigns, but every single campaign Ford does from now on will include mobile. They said it in February 2011. This is now. The world is changing now. Every Ford campaign on television, on radio, newspapers, billboards will have mobile in it as its interactive channel. This is the future. We could look at other parts in that diagram I'm sorry I don't have much time. I don't want to take your time on that. I, have, I want to talk specifically about examples from mobile advertising. But this is the slide you might want to take out your camera phone and take a picture. All of you who want to build your future in mobile, this is your secret recipe. This is the eight unique abilities of mobile, what makes mobile different from the internet, what makes mobile different from digital TV, what makes mobile dif different from DVDs, what makes mobile digit different from any other media. Eight unique abilities on which you can build successful mobile services, mobile advertising campaigns, mobile marketing campaigns, mobile media concepts, etc. This is what the future is built on, these eight. And obviously, you don't need to read my book. Go to Wikipedia. There's plenty of stuff for free that you can, you can uh, read about that. So let me show you a quick evolution of how mobile advertising and marketing is changing. We start from the legacy media. As we heard in the opening statements, you should not copy the internet. Let's do something better in mobile. Let's take a statistic. This is from Turkcell, Turkey. Similar economy to, to uh, Malaysia, uh, 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 a Muslim country. Um, a little bit bigger in population, but similar economics. Um, Turkcell ran an M SMS and MMS campaign for Flow Shoes, a shoe, shoe store, achieved 900,000 total, uh, I mean, they sent 900,000 messages, almost a million messages, received 160,000 replies. A 20 to 0, 20% 20 response rate. 20% response rate. Those of you who work in digital media know that on the internet, if you achieve a 2% click-through rate, you have Malaysia's award-winning best campaign on the internet this year. Most internet campaigns get 0.2% click-through rate. In Turkey, shoe store, 20% not click-through rate, response rate. This is the future. Now let's take a look what we can do with this. Tiffany's in America, jewelry store. Ladies know Tiffany's brand, right? Jewelry store, they have a website where you can buy jewelry. They also have a mobile website. 
their advertising agency in New York, RGA, noticed that the mobile website was not mobile optimized. It was the same site online and the same site on mobile. RGA went and optimized it for mobile. What happened? Look at the bullet point in red. After optimizing the website for mobile, the sales on the mobile website more than doubled, grew by 125%. At this point, everyone in this room understands as an absolute fact there cannot be one internet. There cannot be one internet. If there was one internet, this would be impossible. There are two internets. I am not saying one is better than the other, but there is a personal computer-oriented internet and there is a mobile-oriented internet and they are different. The only reason that this is possible for you to double your sales on the mobile internet is if they are different. Take this as a standard case in the back of your mind when you are talking to your colleagues from now on, when someone silly comes to your office and says, oh, we're just going to do one standard. No, 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 we need to mobile optimize. Mobile optimize will get you much better success than copying what you had on the internet. Then let's go to interactive. If we do interactive, here's the statistic, statistic. Another country very similar to Malaysia, similar economics, similar kind of population, South Africa. The potato chips, liquor flavor, they ran a campaign to invite the South African population to send in flavor suggestions for new flavors of potato chips. How many responded? This would be very similar response probably in, in uh, Malaysia. 187,000 uh, ideas. What do we want to taste in our next potato chips? This is the way it will be in the future, R&D development. We ask for our audiences to come and co-create with us, to participate in the creation of our brand and the experience and how it evolves. Dunkin's Donuts has done this in America, Lay's has done this in India and so forth. Let's take a concrete example, what can we do today? Perhaps the most astonishing story right now, from South Korea, Home Plus. This is a subsidiary of Tesco's. You look at this picture and you see this is a subway station. These people are going into the subway train. They're going into the train. There are, there are billboards at the subway station with pictures of the groceries from the store. Milk, Coca-Cola, orange juice, cornflakes. Here's a close-up. See, the guy comes close to the picture, takes a picture with his camera out of a QR code and orders the food. I need two bottles of orange juice, I need three bottles of, of milk, and so forth. The food is delivered to his home, same evening. Imagine how much time this saves when you don't have to go to the grocery store while you are waiting at the subway station and you get to do your grocery shopping. Imagine how much money this saves for the store. How expensive is it in Kuala Lumpur to buy that little 7-Eleven store and pay the rent? for your little grocery store. And suddenly we can do it on a poster. We can do it on a picture, on a billboard. This is the future of shopping, mobile. And then let's add viral. When we add viral and we are using unique abilities of mobile, let's go to another country, similar to Malaysia in its economy, Poland, similar size population. Orange in Poland, one of the networks, like Maxis or Digi or Cellcom here, ran, ran a, a campaign with BMW to do a, a daily uh, prize award uh, to bin, win a BMW car. They ran little quizzes on SMS. Nothing strange about that. The clever part, those people who forwarded the quiz to their friends had an added chance to win the car. Clever. Viral marketing. You get your friends to support your brand. How successful? 1.5 million people in Poland participated in this. Opt-in database for BMW marketing. In Malaysia, 1.5 million people right there 
You do this for Toyota, you do this for Ford, you do this for Volkswagen, whoever, whatever is your car brand that you are support, you're now having your campaign for. Run this campaign. How successful is this? This is one of a dozen different mobile campaigns invented by the, the mobile advertising guru for the car industry, Mark Mielau, the head of digital for BMW. You know what happened to Mark? After he had all this success with BMW, you know what BMW did to him? They, they rewarded him. He's today the chief marketing officer of Rolls-Royce. You do your mobile stuff well and you can get a good promotion. Chief marketing officer of Rolls-Royce after succeeding with mobile marketing. That's awesome. Anyway, so what can we do with this? Another car example from Sweden. Mini ran a campaign in Stockholm. Steal the Mini. In this, you have a Mini, which is a virtual car parked in Stockholm. You have to go to a map on your phone and find where it is parked. And then you go and you steal the car. I caught it and I have it. And then I run away. And you all see on your phone where a guy is and you chase me. Whoever catches the car runs away with it. The person who has it at the end of the game wins the real mini. Awesome game, right? This is the kind of stuff we can do with mobile. Completely different from doing traditional television advertising or copying a website. Then we want to do opt-in. Take the statistic from Japan. McDonald's has achieved 20 million opt-in Japanese consumers signing in for McDonald's advertising. Opt-in McDonald's advertising. This is absolutely crazy. Malaysia, your age population pyramid is like this. Few old people, lots of young people. Japan is like this. All old people know young people, right? Japan is a fishy eating country. Sushi. Who, where do they get 20 million Japanese to, to even sign up for McDonald's, to even go to McDonald's? But one in six Japanese has volunteered opt-in for McDonald's coupons. If McDonald's can do this in Japan, you can do this in Malaysia. It just takes time. You need to work at it. And notice 10 million of them, half of them, redeem coupons monthly. Several of them, millions and millions of them daily. So what can we do with this? Let's go to Hong Kong. The, the Guinness uh, campaign with the rugby tournament, the Sevens. Guinness created an advertising ap application for the mobile phone. It is a sporting application. So, because it's the rugby tournament, so you see the scores, which team won, which team lost. It has the statistics, who are the best players. You get the biographies of the players and the coaches and so forth. You see the venues where the events are being played. It is also a tourist guide for Hong Kong, because this is for foreign tourists coming to Hong Kong to, to watch the tournament. You also see where your hotel is, the subway map, Where's the airport? Where's the bank? Where's the, the restaurants? And so forth. It's a Guinness app. So of course it shows you the bars where they serve Guinness beer. Of course. And it has a very clever gimmick. It has click-to-talk buttons that translate English text to Cantonese spoken. So an Australian tourist who comes to Hong Kong takes a taxi, you all know Hong Kong taxi drivers don't speak English, they only speak Cantonese, press the button and your phone will speak Cantonese. Tell the taxi driver to take me to the, to the hotel or tell the bartender I want to buy a Guinness or you tell the pretty lady what's a beautiful lady like you do doing in a bar like this, you know, and, and but a Guinness beer spirit. How successful? 25% increase in Guinness sales. This works, this is different, this is powerful. Then we go to engagement marketing. The ultimate in mobile advertising is engagement marketing. Most of you, if you go to your marketing professors, they cannot properly even define engagement marketing. Engagement marketing was invented by Alan Moore, my co-author of my fourth book, and this is the definition of engagement marketing. Engagement marketing is the process 
of involving your consumers in the co-creation of the advertising process, marketing activities. Not user-generated advertising. We are not asking for the, users to use, for the consumers to use their camera phones to create little advertising for you know, Harley Davidson or, or whatever. This is co-created advertising, co-created marketing. You create a format for the consumers to be able to co-create with you. Why do you do that? Alan Moore tells us, people embrace what they create. If you let your consumers co-create with you, they will become your fanatics. They will become your proponents. They will become your ambassadors. What Jonathan McDonald talks about, the army of fanatics. This is how you build them. So let me show you an example. Here we go with a statistic from China, North Face. Created a nice little contest, Conquer China. It invited China, it's the sports, sporting goods brand. It invited the, the Chinese people to go and, and plant little red Chinese, little red um, North Face flags anywhere in China. And they had big billboards that show the China map. So someone conquered, you know, the Hilton Hotel in Kuala Lumpur, and someone went to the, Kuala, to the, to the uh, international airport, and someone went to uh, Sepang, you know, Formula One uh, circuit, and so forth. So conquering places. Plant your flag. Whoever is first there to plant the flag conquers the place. They achieved, this is China, 651,000 virtual red flags. Sales, each time you planted a flag, you got a coupon to go to the store, discount. Sales increased, more than doubled, 106% increase in sales. This works. Amazing. And what do we want to do with this? Example from Japan. The deodorant wake-up girls from Axie. This is for teenage boys who want to be woken up by sexy girls. So they have eight real Japanese girls. Each one of them has been modeled into an avatar. You pick your favorite girl, you down the, download the girl onto your mobile phone, and tomorrow morning you don't set an alarm on your phone. Tomorrow morning, your phone will go, Hi, Tommy, it's time to wake up. And don't forget to use your deodorant. Deodorant sales up by 300%. 200,000 unique users in Japan. This is the kind of things we can do. So, I want to end on a thought that I would like you to try to keep in mind. Let's make mobile services magical. Use the abilities of mobile and make them something really special. The example from Japan, iButterfly, which has just flown into to Hong Kong, just now launching in Germany. So this is an augmented reality, virtual reality butterfly. If we had them here in Kuala Lumpur, normal world, you don't see anything, but when you get your mobile phone, you can see there's something, and then you start coming closer to it, and you see, ah, oh, there's a but red butterfly, and then you have to catch it. To catch it, you have to do that like with a real butterfly, to catch it. And then you catch. There's one butterfly from, from, from Kowloon, there's another but butterfly from, from Central, there's another butterfly from from uh, Wan Chai and so forth, different parts of Hong Kong. You collect them all. Every time when you collect a uh, butterfly, you get a discount. You get a coupon, in this case, for uh, Pacific Coffee in Hong Kong. Magical, whimsical, wonderful, different. So, to end a thought from someone who's been thinking mobile for a long time. Eric Schmidt now tells people outside of Google, and he says, put your best people on mobile. You are in the right room. This is the biggest economic opportunity of your lifetime. Mobile. Make the best of it. I want to end on four thoughts. Mobile is not just the biggest, it is also the most important medium. When you do things on mobile, don't copy the legacy media. Use the unique powers of mobile. When you do, learn what is engagement marketing and build that loyalty on that repeat behavior with your consumers and customers. And when you do that, make your concept magical. That's all I had prepared for you. Thank you.